One of the biggest components to my coming of age era in this last year was becoming a Christian and giving my life to Jesus. So today I wanted to make a little bit of a different video and just talk all about how I've become closer to God. And if you've been needing help in that area, then this is the video for you. And if not, then you can just skip this one. I am a Christian. I became a Christian about a year ago when I went to a Christian church for the first time on Easter of 2021 and I surrendered my life to Jesus. And a year later, I was baptized on Easter of 2022, so pretty recently. These are some of the ways that I've been able to grow my relationship with God and just understand Him and get to know Him as much as I can, which is honestly a lifelong journey, so don't put a bunch of pressure on it. But if you're looking to strengthen your relationship, start your relationship over, or start your relationship with God, that you've never had before, then this is the video for you. First thing on the list is prayer. Prayer is our way of communicating with God. Whenever Jesus died, the veil in the temple split in half to represent that we now have a direct connection to God through Jesus. So we can pray to God whenever we want. We can pray to him all the time. In fact, we should be in prayer all the time, praising him, thanking him, asking for advice. And it's one of the best ways to be in communication with God. Whenever you are praying, you can can pretty much say whatever is on your heart or on your mind you can let the Holy Spirit guide you in Romans it talks about how the Holy Spirit helps us know what to say in our prayers but something I always like to do in my prayers is praise God for everything that he's doing in my life and in my day I like to always have a moment of surrender in my prayers surrendering whatever is stressing me out or my whole entire day as a whole I might ask for some advice on situations going on and then surrender them and I like to always pray that I can be further in God's will so if you don't know what to pray about, let the Holy Spirit guide you or literally just give thanks or whatever comes to mind. Just remember that God is not a genie. You don't just pray for things and then get them. I'm going to say actually what Jesus said about prayer in Matthew 6, 5 through 8. It says, whenever you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites because they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by people. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward. But when you pray, go into your private room, shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't babble like the Gentiles since they imagine they'll be heard for their many words. Don't be like them because your father knows the things you need before you ask them. So once again, God already knows what you need. Prayer isn't a show and it's not for anyone except you and God. Now as far as praying in group settings, praying for other people, of course that's okay. You don't have to do that. But I found that it has strengthened my prayer life and I enjoy praying for other people. So if you're nervous to do that, just let the Holy Spirit guide you even if you just say one little sentence praying for someone else or the group, you'll slowly gain the confidence and the strength to be able to do it. Also, your prayers should be intentional. Don't just spout off stuff just to say stuff, just to make your prayers longer. Your length of prayer doesn't matter. Your intentions and your heart matters. Next, probably most important thing is the word, the Bible. This is literally a gift from God. And not everyone has always had the Bible. We are so lucky. So if you're not in the Bible every day, it might be difficult to hear what God is trying to say to you. This is a living word. When you have the Holy Spirit and you read the Bible, it brings all new understanding to it and you can finally understand what God is trying to say to you. I always like to pray before I read my Bible just that I'll be able to understand and hear what God is trying to say to me. And I like to genuinely go in and study the Bible. I like to highlight things that stand out to me or where I remember it in the Old Testament coming into the New Testament. I like to look at different versions. So if you don't already know, there is a Bible app. This is what it looks like. And you can look through all of the Bible and then you can look at tons and tons of different translations. If you are new and you don't know what translation to read, I personally like to read the Christian Standard or CSB. Um, I also like the NIV the ESV, those are kind of like my mains, but you can read whatever version of the Bible you want, really. And I actually like to compare different versions to see the translation, and if you really want to dive into it, you can look up the Greek and what the original meanings or the Hebrew or whatever that is. Usually I'll learn that kind of stuff in church though. Even if you're reading one verse a day, start with one verse, maybe start with one chapter, it is transformative. So what I personally do is I have this journal called the Read Through the Bible in a Year Map for Women. I'm trying to read the whole Bible. It'll give me two passages from the Old Testament, so starting in Genesis and going all the way through, and then I'll be reading a Psalms or a Proverbs once it gets towards the end, and then something from the New Testament. So it aligns it really well to be able to get it all done in one year. 
There is tons and tons of study guides and devotionals that you can read to help you understand or to give you guidance or just to help you know what to read for the day. Number three on my list, I have praise and worship. Now there are tons of ways of worshiping God and a lot of times we just think of music. That is not the only way, but that's what I'm gonna talk about. So I like to take a moment to have praise and worship. I might be a little bit in prayer, just singing these songs, just praising God for who he is and everything that he has done. I basically have three different playlists. I have my worship playlist that I'll be listening to while reading the Bible or just trying to do some praise and worship. I have a playlist called Jesus Vibes that is more like a vibey music, but it's still Christian. I still feel like I'm praising and worshiping while listening to it. And then I have one called God Vibes and I listen to this while I work out. It's got a lot of like flyleaf, skillet, NF, stuff like that. If you don't know where to start, I heard a pastor one time say, give God 15 minutes of your morning, five minutes in prayer, five minutes in his word, and five minutes in worship. Like I said, worship isn't just music. So I just wanna list a few different ways that you can worship God. Seeking the truth and getting and trying to get to know him better is worship reading his word, praying, giving thanks to God, remembering everything good that he's done for you, sharing your testimony, serving other people, loving other people, being intentional about the words that we use, appreciating God's creations, being obedient to what God is telling you, and being involved in the body of Christ, the church. Which leads me straight into my next topic. Number four is community or the church. This involves a lot of things. This is the actual church building that you go to. This is where you're serving where you're spending your money, the people that you're hanging out with, that is all in your community. The church isn't a building. The church is anyone who is a believer and follower of Jesus. So let's start with actual church. I think it is very important to actually go to church. Now, if you miss church, it's not the end of the world, but you get a lot out of it. You get to hear God's word, a sermon about it. You get to praise with other believers, to listen to worship music. Maybe you get to go to a class and discuss and learn together. And God intended for us to be in community. He didn't intend for Christians to be alone. So I think going to church is very important. Now, when looking for a church, you want to make sure that it is biblically based and they are using scripture constantly. And that is their base for everything. We don't want to go to a church that's based on men's philosophy. And I would also highly recommend going to a church that is very involved. They have places that you can plug in, classes you can go to, Bible studies you can join. Another big factor of community is your friends. The people we surround ourselves have huge impact on our life. If you've ever heard like you become the five people you're closest to, it is true. That is what happens. So if you are surrounding yourself with Christians who are on fire with God, you're all chasing God together, you're going to follow in their footsteps. But if all your friends are pulling you down, holding you back, maybe it's time to cut off some friendships. Now I'm not telling you to just cut everyone off because you can also lift other people up, but you need to make sure you are aware of what is happening. Are you lifting up or are you being pulled down? And I'm not saying you only have to be friends with Christians, but I think it is also important to have a good Christian friend group and community that can lift you up and be there for you. Okay, this kind of leads into the next one, which is join a Bible study. This changed my life. It really did. It transformed me and really pushed me further on my walk with God. Of course, I was doing my own little Bible studies, my personal time, but joining an actual Bible study is amazing. You get to meet other people and get different perspectives and dive deeper into the word and have better understanding of what you maybe didn't understand before. So the first thing I did was join a community group at my church where we have Sunday school and then we also have a Bible study once a week. And when we have our Bible studies, we dive deep. Like we spent, I think, four weeks on one chapter in Romans. We're doing a Roman study right now. So you really just learn so much and it's such a great place to be when you're going through rough times to have other people praying for you and lifting you up and genuinely care about you and there for you. Leading into my next one, especially if you are a new Christian or recommitting to God, you need to be in a discipleship or mentorship. God called us to make disciples, not converts. It's not about, okay, you believe in Jesus, cool. It's about your walk with God. So I have have this older lady who's been Christian for a very long time and me and her just meet once a week. We talk about everything going on 
in my life. There is no shame between us. She tells me everything that's going on in her life. We talk about what we learned from God in this past week. We might do a little devotional together and just basically having someone who has your back no matter what and is guiding through your walk with God. It's been so amazing and even if you're not a new Christian, I would highly recommend getting into a discipleship or if you can give time to be a mentor for someone, that would be amazing too. Number seven is to actively listen and follow what God is telling you. So how do you hear God? God speaks to people in so many different ways. One of the ways that you might hear from God is by reading his word and the Holy Spirit will kind of bring something to light and you're like, oh, thanks God. Um, maybe he'll use other people to talk to you. Maybe he will verbally talk to you. There are tons of different ways to be able to hear God, but when he is calling you to do something, obedience following is so important. Now, I just want to clarify, we are saved by faith and faith alone, but doing God's work is an honor. Being able to do something that God asks you to do is not only fulfilling, but it's also a form of worship. I do things that God asks me to do because I love him, not because I have to, to be saved. I'm already saved. He already loves me. He's not going to love me any more or any less if I do or don't do what he asks. But because I love God, I'm going to do what he asks me to do. This could be the most simple thing like telling someone about Jesus or helping someone move or just volunteering at a church event. Whatever God is asking you to do, I would highly recommend it. And if you are actively listening, especially to the convictions that he's giving you, is going to improve your relationship. That's like kind of a whole nother topic, but convictions. Different Christians might have different convictions about different things. But if God is convicting you about something, that means it's time to change. He is trying to refine you. That's a tough one. That's a lifelong thing. Um, but following up right with that, the last thing that I have to recommend is surrender. This is my favorite tattoo. It says, let go, let God, which is basically just surrender everything, anything, and all things to God. God's ways are higher than ours. He knows everything before it happens. Like he is outside of time. He is outside of creation, and he wants what is best for you. And the only way he can help you is if you surrender to him because he doesn't force you to do anything. Those are my tips and tricks for getting to know God. Everyone, leave a little bit of your story down below or things that you've done that have strengthened your relationship with God. I love you guys so much. God loves you guys so much. I might start posting a lot more Christian content, not all the time, but I do post three times a week. So maybe if one of those videos or once every other week was Christian content, I would love that. I love sharing my love for Jesus. If you also love Jesus, then you can watch these. And if you're really not interested, you can simply click off and you don't have to watch these. But this is something I'm passionate about and this YouTube channel is about me. So now it's gonna be about Jesus a lot of times. So stay tuned. I love you guys so much. Don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next next one. Bye!